well, hey world, why don't you nerd out with me for one minute about something super cool that happened just the other day? It has to do with this little thing. Yes, it looks like a turd, but no, it's not. It is a little cocoon that's covered by a few leaves here. And I knew it was a cocoon, but I really didn't know what kind it was. So I asked a coworker who's very knowledgeable on the subject if they could identify it and they couldn't get an exact species, but they knew it was a moth cocoon of some sort. So I was like, oh yeah, that's really cool. Let's add it to the collection. Not really thinking ahead that there might still be something in it. So just a couple of days ago, and this is like six months plus later, that we had a little critter crawl out the other end. And we were introduced to this gorgeous little male polyphemus moth here. So a little bit of background about polyphemus moths. They get their name from the Greek mythology character Polyphemus, which was a giant cyclops with a great big round eye in the middle of his head. And much like the character, the polyphemus moth has great big eye spots all over its wings. And these eye spots are actually used as a defense mechanism, oftentimes to confuse predators into thinking that they are maybe a larger animal than they really are. Especially on those hind wings, you can see how dark and pronounced those eye spots are. It almost looks a little bit like what an owl's eyes would look like. So that's the idea is that they're able to confuse those predators. So that being said, I feel like the polyphemus moth is a rather large moth. It's actually one of the largest that we get here in North America. Their range goes all the way up north into southern Canada and all the way south into Mexico. With the exception of a few states, they are pretty much found everywhere. They are an incredible moth that when their wingspan is all the way out, about 10 to 15 centimeters or four to six inches wide. Uh, the males and females don't really differ in size all that much or color, uh, but the difference that you can easily tell male versus female is actually on their antennae there. So I don't know if that's in focus, but you can see that there's a very fluffy antennae and the antennae are used as almost like a like a way to smell, it's another sense that insects use oftentimes. And the longer these little hair-like things are, the better it is at picking up the pheromones that the females put off when it comes time to mate. So he has very, very big flashy antennae, but you can see this individual here maybe isn't as impressive as the picture that I showed you. Now, it just so happens that when this moth hatched out, that its wings didn't develop properly, and he is actually not able to fly. And I felt super bad about that. I didn't want him to, to be too easy of prey for something else. So naturally, I looked up, oh, what can you feed this moth? How can you care for it? And I stumbled upon the fact that it actually doesn't eat at all and its mouth parts have been reduced. And a lot of times uh, with animals, you'll see that a trait that would normally be there, if it's reduced, it's actually called vestigial. It means it no longer serves a function on that specific animal there. So there are actually a few species of moths that don't have those mouth parts and do not feed as an adult. Because of that, they, their primary purpose is to reproduce. So the male would go flying several miles to find a female to, to lay those eggs, and then they've served their purpose. So uh, he would actually only live for a couple of days, and four to seven days is about max, and he actually just hatched a couple of days ago. So he, I'm just trying to give him a few nice couple days of his adult life. So he's not eaten, and I thought that maybe uh, by taking him to a moth garden, you know, you hear a lot about butterfly gardens, but you don't hear a lot about moth gardens. So I made a little moth garden here. Yes, it's a bunch of lamps. I wanted to show him a good time for his last couple days, but cool thing about polyphemus moths it is said that they are good luck if you find them in or near your house. So if you do happen to find one of these critters hanging around, 
just take some time to appreciate them and um, hopefully help them out if you need to.